Thank you for coming today. Uh, we have uh, called uh, you here today to announce that we have filed uh, charges against Damone uh, Wilcoxon in relation to the shootings which occurred in October at the Northwest and North District of Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, we have filed charge of criminal recklessness related to the incident which occurred at the Northwest District and two counts of attempted murder for the incident which occurred at the North District and one count of attempted murder arising out of the SWAT standoff that occurred on October 31st. Uh, as you are aware, on October 4th at about 11 p.m., uh, multiple shots were fired at the Northwest District. Uh, uh, at that scene, there were 30 spent shell casings recovered as well as a handwritten note. On October 13th, a similar incident, virtually identical incident, occurred at the North District of IMPD. At that scene, 13 spent shell casings as well as a, a very similar note uh, was recovered. And on October 31st, uh, when officers uh, went to an apartment on the east side of Indianapolis to serve a search warrant at an apartment I believe to be occupied by Will Coxon. Uh, as you recall, a SWAT standoff occurred. Uh, and in the course of that, six shots were fired uh, through the apartment door with officers outside that door. Uh, to explain the difference in the charges between the Northwest District and the North District, uh, at the Northwest District, uh, in the first incident, there were multiple shots fired which struck uh, the building, which struck the vehicle, uh, but uh, no indication uh, of any um, knowledge of the shooter that an individual was inside. By contrast, uh, at the North District, uh, when the shooting occurred on October 13th, uh, two officers would have been plainly visible um, through an open or through a window, a lighted window, um, and in particular, it was obvious that from the vantage point where the shell casings were recovered, uh, that the individual shooting from that location would have been able to see the two officers, and indeed, uh, one round came very close to the officers uh, at that scene. I'd like to. Uh, uh, commend uh, Sergeant Mark Prater and the other investigators of IMPD for this investigation, as well as commend our Deputy Prosecutor Jason McGrath, who has been our point person since day one uh, in this investigation and will lead the prosecution of the case going forward. And I have one final observation. Oh. Yesterday in Georgia, Two police officers were shot, one fatally, another wounded. The death of the officer yesterday in Georgia marked the 63rd officer who has been killed in the line of duty this year. It is apparent to us that the drumbeat of criticism and reckless accusations against our police officers by some elected officials and politicians, by activists, and to a certain extent by the media, have placed our officers in grave peril throughout the country. Five officers in Dallas, three in Baton Rouge. November 20th, one day, four officers shot around the country, one fatally. In July, as you know, an officer's house and vehicle was shot up on the east side of Indianapolis, and we filed charges in that case. And so it should be clear that to the extent that these incidents have occurred in Marion County and to the extent that any occur going forward, that we will prosecute these individuals to the fullest extent allowed. Make no mistake. Thank you, Mr. Curry. First, let me just thank uh, Mr. Curry and his team for their exceptional work. You know, we work together every day. Uh, to bring charges on individuals that are causing havoc and harm in our community. And in this case, not only did Mr. Curry's team continue that worthy work, but they also did that on behalf of our 1,700 police officers, knowing that their safety was also in jeopardy. So thank you, sir, for your team and, and your approach and your words of support as well. 
Uh, let me begin by thanking all the partners that helped make this a reality today. Uh, obviously, the prosecutor's office, but then also my good friend Jay Abbott with the FBI and his team. They work diligently throughout this entire process. I can't say enough for Superintendent Carter and the state police and the work that they've offered. John Late and the sheriff's uh, office and all the agencies that have rallied around to assist IMPD in this investigation. I also want to say something about the men and women of IMPD, and I think it's very clear, is that even though this was occurring and even though there has been unprecedented violence towards officers throughout this country, and we've seen a rise in violence towards our officers here, that they still every day showed up for work, they went about their jobs, the things that you didn't see, the extra security that had to be in place, the officers that had to monitor parking lots, the officers that had to monitor different facilities, the detectives are working around the clock uh, with any lead that was coming in, the SWAT team that was having to give us tactical advice and, and working day in and day out to secure not only our police stations, but the fear that this may go somewhere else and making that planning. And then, as we get a break and we get investigated, to complicate matters even more when we have the individual we believe that's responsible and working with Zionsville authorities as well, we locate the individual only to find out that he has a small child in the home with him. While that SWAT situation was going on, he fired at our officers. Our officers did not return fire. They stayed there and bravely kept their post. Uh, to complicate matters even more, there was a fire at an apartment nearby, and our SWAT officers left post to go and save some individuals in the fire, came back to the post, evacuated people from the apartment. Uh, I share this because it shows you the complexity of police work. It shows you the bravery of our officers each and every day. I can't be more proud of them for their work. They continue to work today, even with some very daunting circumstances that we face as a nation, as a city. I'm proud to be their chief. I'm proud to see that the work they're doing, and I'm very grateful to the prosecutor. And most of all, I'm grateful that no one in Indianapolis uh, was injured as a result of this. Uh, but also, let's not forget that an individual lost his life in Zionsville. We need to remember that family and all the families of homicide victims throughout this great city. Mr. Curry. Any questions? Yes, absolutely. And if, if you recall, in the uh, situation in July, uh, the defendant in that case uh, was charged. His name is March Ratney. And in that, uh, when we announced those charges, we uh, discussed at length the fact that we would not have any way to prove that um, that particular individual knew that anyone was even home uh, at the time that the, the home was shot uh, and the car was shot up. And, and so as a consequence, the, the, the most that we could do in terms of the charge was criminal recklessness. And that that is uh, exactly the same case in terms of the shooting at the Northwest District. By contrast, at the North District, as I said, uh, it was obvious that uh, those two officers would have been um, easily visible from, from outside the building uh, because they were sitting near a window, it was lighted, uh, and the shell casing recovered were at a vantage point where that would, those individuals would have been uh, apparent. Uh, the question was not asked, uh, but uh, we will be uh, obviously in contact, have been in contact, and will be in contact going forward with uh, Boone County Prosecutor Todd Meyer in terms of uh, coordinating um, our case uh, with the pending murder case against Mr. Wilcoxon there. Is the weapon recovered here the same weapon that was in the blood from Zionville? Uh, what I, all I can say is that the, the uh, as set forth in the probable cause, the um, uh, weapon that was recovered at the standoff has been determined to be the weapon that fired the casings that were recovered at the Northwest District uh, and the North District. Mr. Wilcoxon, do you have anybody to tell or anybody other than anybody else's knowledge that he's engaged in this type of activity? Uh, not that we're aware of. There's been much confusion about the standoff. Is the police have offered to let this come back, or is what the what has happened to your client required the firing? They, in terms of the comparison of the. Um, the firearm to the shell casings, uh, it took, as I recalled, uh, uh, two to three weeks. But certainly there was no urgency uh, from our standpoint to the extent that Mr. Wilcoxon was locked up and, and uh, our point person, uh, Debbie Prosecutor McGrath, was involved in two different trials during that time. And so uh, he had other, other responsibilities as well. 
Thank you.